Hey guys, today I'm back in my closet. I'm taking a break from my computer and this is going to be like a two-part video because today I just wanted to discuss why some people don't like modern and why some people don't like vintage. And then in my next video, I'm going to show you guys some data behind, you know, the modern and vintage uh, items. And um, yeah, so this video is just a discussion. The data uh, stuff all behind this will be in the next video. And I thought it'd just be easier to, you know, separate the topics. Uh, but anyways, um, if this is the first video you're watching of mine, I kind of want to get my biases or whatever that you want to say out the way. So don't think that I'm like just choosing one side because, you know, I, don't, I just don't want to come off as being very biased because honestly, I feel like I'm pretty like indifferent and I'm kind of in the middle. Um, so if you haven't seen my all of my investments video, you can check that out. But I show you guys all my products, but you can kind of see all of them here. But uh, you can see it's mainly modern. I have some vintage stuff like here. I have the 2014 Charizard EX boxes. I have a Zekrom black and white box. And I have some Checkling blisters. But honestly, that's pretty much it. So you can tell I mainly just invest into modern. And in my next video, I'm going to talk more about why I do that. But um, today, I'm just going to discuss, you know, why do some people not like modern and why do some people like vintage? And kind of tell you guys some, you know, more of the factual stuff. So, uh, why do people not like modern? Um, I feel like there's just mainly one reason, which is overprinting. Now that everyone uses that word overprinting now with modern products and whatever, because, you know, the prices are so low. Um, so I'm going to kind of talk about that. So let's start with the Sword and Shield era, because that's kind of where I guess, you know, it all kind of started with um, the overprinting or people, you know, not really thinking that these boxes are going to go up in value. So, you know, Chilling Rain, Fusion Strike, and there's probably some other sets I'm missing, like Battle Styles or whatever. Um, those boxes hit like, what, 85 bucks or something? And no one thought that they were going to go up in price, you know. There's so much supply in the market, there's no demand. Um, but if you look at the price today, obviously that's not true. The boxes are at now like $140, $150. Obviously, Battle Styles is still at like, I don't know, $110. But for the most part, they've all gained in price by a lot. So if you were to say it's overprinted, I guess at the time it's true because it did hit 85 bucks, um, but it only took a year for all the supply to dry up. So I feel like it is overprinted in a way where, you know, the prices do drop um, in the beginning. But over time, it, like it only took a year, the prices went back up to $144, $150. So I don't really think that statement is really true because, I mean, the value wouldn't have gone up that quick and that fast if there was a ton of supply and no demand. And that's, I think, another factor they're missing. When you say that, you know, it's overprinted um, and that's why you shouldn't invest into it or whatever, I mean, there's demand for it. That's the thing. Like, yeah, there's a lot of product on the market, but there's demand. Um, Scarlet and Violet, though, um, I guess you could maybe argue it's a little bit different because obviously a lot of people that have opened Scarlet and Violet know that the cards are a lot easier to pull than in Sword and Shield. And I guess that's another factor is that the um, cards in here and you know, the chase cards in Sword and Shield are a lot harder to pull in Scarlet and Violet. And you can see that with the prices. The prices for the Scarlet and Violet sets, they're, I mean, for uh, Paldea Evolved with the, I think, is that the set with the Iona or whatever? I think that price is still pretty high, but the Miriam and the Scarlet and Violet base is like 40 bucks now. So it's a little bit different because they are easier to pull. So you might say, you know, people won't want to open it because, you know, the pull rates are so low, are so high. But at the same time, the boxes right now are so cheap that people are just going to buy them to open it to have fun. Um, so I guess that's another thing. Um, but mainly for modern, people don't like it because, um, you know, it's just overprinted. But like I said, with, you know, the value going up for um, Sword and Shield boxes, I don't really think that's true. But, you know, Scarlet Valley could be different because, you know, with the pull rates and everything. But, yeah. Um, now I'm going to talk, kind of talk about why some people don't like vintage. So I think the main reason why people don't really, I mean, there's a couple of reasons, but I think the main reason people don't like vintage is because it's, the art is kind of old and outdated and yeah, it has its own kind of style. But at the same time, if you think about how this hobby has grown, it's mainly from the Sword and Shield era. So a lot of the people collecting cards, um, from the Sword and Shield era, I don't think are going to really, or the people that don't like, you know, people that don't like vintage, I think a lot of them say that, you know, People, you know, people open the stuff for nostalgia value most of the time. So in the future, five years from now, people who, you know, got into the hobby around Sword and Shield are going to want to open these boxes. They're not going to care for, I don't know, X, Y, Black and White, and all that stuff passed. And um, I guess it's kind of valid, but there are going to be some, you know, people that like vintage. But I feel like for the most part, a lot of people mostly who got into the hobby are probably going to care about modern. I think that's pretty true. Uh, and, you know, the, I guess the final reason why people don't like um, vintage is because it's kind of slow growing. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. So I'll give you guys an example of what I mean by slow growing is, okay, 
This Charizard EX box right here, it's from 2014. It's 2023, it's almost been 10, it's almost been a decade. So, this box when it came out was probably $20. Um, but if you go on eBay right now and you search it up, it's selling for around $350 to $400. So, it's gained what, like 20x? Um, so, with, when, with that being said, okay, let's say it, start, it starts at around like 20 bucks, right? Over time, it's slowly going to go like this, and it's going to go up. And once it reaches a point where it's so high, like it is right now, um, it's going to start to like plateau. And it's not really going to grow as much. The growth is not just ex exponential where it's going to keep going up. That's not how that works. Um, so when it hits a certain ceiling price, it's going to kind of stay there. And it's not really going to grow much. Yeah, over time, maybe another 5, 10 years, it's going to maybe, I don't know, it could double. But compared to a modern box, like you could take Sword and Shield, for example. Um, the Chilling Rain box was only 85 bucks a year ago. Now it's $144 or 150 bucks or whatever. It's almost doubled. So for the time for, you know, the modern boxes to double versus a uh, old box like you know this charge at es box yes i know it's a collection box even a booster box um it's just gonna take a lot longer because it's already grown so much that it, it it's kind of just you know gonna take up a lot longer to grow because this box is around like i said 350 bucks for it to go to 700 dollars, it's gonna take more than just a couple years um but a modern box because it's already low price and you know it's more you know there's more demand for it it's gonna you know grow a lot faster so uh, with that being said, that's kind of the end of this video. It's a little bit shorter. But in my next video, I am going to talk about, you know, the data side behind this all. But I just want to tell you guys kind of, you know, the discussion part of why I'm making, you know, I guess this video about modern versus vintage. So hope you guys all enjoyed. And uh, just thank you guys for all, you know, like I always say, subscribing, uh, liking, and watching all my videos. Because really, the growth of this channel has been, I think, pretty amazing. And I really appreciate you guys commenting and all that stuff. As you guys can see, I respond to basically all the comments. So if you have anything to ask me, you can ask me. Um, so see you guys in the next video. So stay tuned because I am going to keep con uh, continuing to talk about vintage and modern in my next one. So with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. I'll be on my computer and I'll see you guys then.